What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another special edition of the Bombastic Podcast presented by Natty State Sports and hosted by Andrew Ellis. Uh, no guests for y'all this week. I guess I spoiled y'all too much last week by having Jones and Souza set the bar too high. Um, but the Hogs are on the road. We got a little bit of a weird situation going on where we got to put this episode out on a Wednesday because it's a Thursday through Saturday series. Hogs are heading to Auburn for their first road test of the year. Um, if you have not already... Go check out NattyStateSports.com. We've got a tremendous preview of that series, a little bit of a rundown of Auburn and what they're going to bring to the table and what to expect. That was written by our new bright intern, Parker Harrison, who's doing a great job for us. He's a student at the U of A. He's going to be cranking out some written content for us here. And uh, full disclosure, he's in the room with me right now just to break the fourth wall a little bit. Uh, but he's been doing a great job for us. He's going to be cranking out some written content for us. So go check out that story. Go follow him on Twitter. I tweeted out the link and tagged him. So go check that out. Um, and we've got a lot of lot of fun stuff cooking over here at Natty State HQ. It's been a busy day. We uh, the NCAA tournament basketball starting tomorrow. The Arkansas Razorbacks are not in it. Um, the, the baseball team's the only team left playing at a high level. Besides, I guess softball's playing pretty well. They they had a good series against Auburn last weekend. Um, but Arkansas's not in the men's basketball tournament. But there is still plenty to talk about. So me, Curtis, John, and Scotty, we hopped on the mics. Uh, a rare foursome episode. We don't do that these days too much. You know, in the beginning of this whole operation, we were like every day. It felt like we were all going live together. Uh, those those times are few and far between now. So, but we got back together. We got the band back together for a gambling episode. So go check that out on the Natty State YouTube channel and subscribe to that podcast wherever you get your podcast. But that was a lot of fun previewing all the gambling aspect of March Madness and kind of talking about some of the games and who we think is going to emerge, all that fun stuff, all the same stuff you're talking about with your buddies at work. That's what we were talking about today on the gambling show. Um, and Curtis and Scotty, got to give those dudes a shout out. Those dudes have been crushing it. Three pods in three days, although I guess I should say four pods in four days, thanks to Devo Davis, because not only have they been covering the transfer portal like crazy, been putting out more content than anybody else about that. They did, I mean, like I said, three pods in three days, all on the transfer portal. So if there's a name you want to know about or you're wondering what's going on, they will get you up to speed. But they also went live earlier today because we got some some breaking news. Maybe I'm reporting it to you now on the show. Devontae Davis, Devo Davis, has entered the transfer portal, um, seemingly ending his Arkansas career. Uh, we all kind of wondered what was going to happen. We didn't expect him to return necessarily, but yeah, it's, a, it's a little bit of a gut punch seeing Devo enter the transfer portal. But go listen to Curtis and Scotty's full breakdown of that whole situation. They've been doing such a good job, dude. It's really unreal. I mean, like if you look around, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to take any shots at anybody else, but I mean, just look around the state of Arkansas. Who is putting out more basketball content than those dudes? And this is for a bad basketball team that just finished up their season. The season's over. You would think it's time for those guys to go on vacation. Hell no. They're sitting here hitting refresh on the transfer portal. Uh, as I look over right now, Curtis and Scotty are watching highlights of God knows who in the transfer portal, some Belmont big man that I've never heard of. Um, those dudes live and breathe the hoop, the hardwood. Uh, so credit to them, man. Go, go check out all the great content they've been doing. And, of course, if you have not – Already subscribe to the Bombastic Podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your stuff. Go check us out. We support you. We appreciate your support, I guess, but also we support you. Um, but yeah, like I said, Arkansas's got a got a big series up ahead. Um, coming off a big sweep against Missouri, which went as expected. That's kind of what we we set the bar last week. We're like, hey, you kind of have to sweep these dudes. You don't want to go into any SEC weekend expecting a sweep, but that's kind of where we were at. Arkansas took care of business, got the job done. Now they're hitting the road, and now they've been to Arlington. They've played away from Fayetteville, but this is their first true road series. And uh, it's an Auburn team that's coming off of getting swept by Vanderbilt, who Vanderbilt's obviously a good team, good program, but that that series result definitely surprised me. And uh, seeing Arkansas, our Auburn's pitching staff really get roughed up was definitely pretty in interesting. So I'm s assuming the Tigers will have plenty of motivation coming into this weekend. Um, and this is kind of the ultimate – trap series for Arkansas. I mean, this is the ultimate. You just swept Missouri. You're on a 13-game winning streak. You're cruising. Now you're facing a team that just got swept by Vanderbilt. You would think, hey, we're really good. Vanderbilt's really good, and they swept them. We're really good. We might as well just go ahead and sweep them, right? Uh, it's just never that easy. Uh, just If you're expecting a cakewalk in this series, don't. <laughs> um, it's just simply don't. I just don't. It's never going to be that easy, especially going on the road in the SEC. And, you know, Auburn's a... I feel like they're an overachieving program a little bit. Like every year I watch Auburn, I'm never like super blown away by any of their pieces in the lineup other than Sonny DeShare a few years ago. He was awesome. But it's usually just a bunch of scrappy dudes in the lineup. 
maybe a few good arms here and there, but like nothing overwhelming that you haven't seen. But just seems like a team that always gives Arkansas trouble, always gives top teams trouble. And it's just a, especially when they're playing in their park in Plainsman Park, just not a fun place to play. And Arkansas has had a, their fair share of back and forth battles and up and down results there. And so I'm expecting it to be a nice, you know, tightly contested series again. And uh, we're going to dive a little bit more into that a little bit later on this program. But first, I wanted to just take a little peek around the SEC, just kind of look at the other teams in the league and what's going on. Because week to week, like obviously you guys are Arkansas fans or else you wouldn't be listening to this. I'm assuming you like Arkansas baseball. Um, but also, you know, Arkansas is going to play a lot of these teams in the SEC. And frankly, SEC baseball, I think, is like one of the more underrated sports products out there. I just really – there's always two or three series that are just really good, high level, top teams playing each other. Good competition, really, you know, excited fan bases, some awesome parks. And so just kind of looking around, the headliner of this weekend, I feel like, is Florida LSU. Florida, who entered the year top three, top five, just like Arkansas, was kind of in the same echelon as Arkansas preseason. LSU is obviously the defending national champions. They were in that same mix a little bit. Florida's had a pretty fascinating season. I don't know what their overall record is, probably like 11 and seven or like 12 and eight. It's like a, very deceiving overall record because they lose all their midweek games and they, they they lost their first game of the year and then had their their next two canceled. And so it's like they just had these weird results, especially in non-conference play. But they opened up conference play by beating Texas A&M two out of three at home, which if you haven't been paying attention, beating A&M two out of three is about as good of a series victory as one could achieve this time of year. They have been playing awesome baseball. And frankly, the Aggies, you know, if I'm looking around the SEC at who could maybe – be the team Arkansas needs to look out for. A, a week ago, I probably would have told you a and was maybe the leader of that clubhouse. So Florida to go out there and get a big series win against them says a lot about, you know, they're still here. They're still got Jack Caglione. They got this loaded rotation. Kevin O'Sullivan always does a good job there. Uh, they're clearly not going anywhere. Uh, don't be fooled by their midweek results. Um, so I thought that was a big statement for the, for the Gators week one. And now it doesn't get any easier for them. Now they got to go to the road to LSU, to the defending national champions who are coming off a series loss against Mississippi State. So, you know, I don't want to put too much on the LSU Tigers here, but this is kind of a big weekend for them. I mean, they're one and two in SEC play. It's not like LSU is really concerned about their regular season results, especially after winning the national title. But I got a lot of buddies down in Baton Rouge, and they are uh, they are not liking what they're seeing from their baseball team. They're definitely a little concerned and I used to hear all kinds of little chirps here and there of, oh, yeah, can't wait to come play. Can't wait to see. Oh, yeah, baseball season's coming up. I hear all these little chirps. Those chirps ain't happening no more from the LSU fans. They're they're not liking what they're seeing from their pitching, hitting, everything. Uh, they're a little concerned, and they just lost to Mississippi State two out of three on the road. And the only game they won was by one. They were very, they were very, they're like a one out away from getting swept there in Starkville. So huge weekend to see if LSU can respond. Uh, that's going to be a high-level game with just littered with MLB draft prospects. I mean, mention Caglione, like Tommy White, Luke Holman, LSU's Friday night starter. Uh, yeah, and Florida's always loaded with talent. Both those teams, I mean, that's that's as much talent as you'll see on a baseball field in the SEC this weekend. Those those That's going to be a fun matchup. Uh, I mentioned Mississippi State, who just beat LSU, and A&M, who just lost to Florida. They are playing in uh, College Station this weekend, so that's another fun series to kind of see – Who's going to rise to the top? I mean, AM, I mentioned they're one of the more dangerous teams in the SEC, but they lose their first series of the weekend. Now you got a tough one against a Mississippi State team who has been quiet since winning the national championship, have missed the tournament back to back years. They appear to be back in full form, I believe. I can't remember where they're at in the rankings, maybe 15, 16 in that range, but I think they're probably going to even bump up even higher than that. This is a big weekend for both of those teams to kind of assess where they're at. Um, just looking around some of the other ones, you got Ole Miss at Tennessee this weekend. Uh, Tennessee, who I believe lost their first series to Alabama. So, you know, a lot of teams who we all had high expectations for and viewed as potential title contenders who have some questions to answer in week two of SEC play. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they bounce back. Uh, Vanderbilt, who I mentioned, swept Auburn. They're on the road at South Carolina, who beat Ole Miss two out of three. Two really good SEC East teams. You got Kentucky going to Como to face Missouri. Uh, and Kentucky just swept Georgia, Wes Johnson in Georgia, former Arkansas pitching coach, uh, great pitching coach, Wes Johnson. He's now the head coach of Georgia. They had a rough go of it to start SEC play, got swept, and really none of the games were particularly competitive against Kentucky. So we'll see how the Missouri Tigers, I mean, are we, we, also, we all got to look at them, and they only scored one run against Arkansas, so we'll see if maybe they are excited to see non-Arkansas pitching. We'll see if they look better. 
who knows, maybe Missouri steals a game or two from them. We'll see. Uh, I was talking to Parker earlier, and he was saying that he was listening to the D1 Baseball podcast, and they uh, they set the over-under at like three and a half for Missouri conference wins for the year, which is honestly like disrespectful, but it's also hard to disagree. I mean, Arkansas swept them last week, obviously, and you know, there's no there's no shame in getting swept at Baumwalker Stadium, but it really wasn't particularly competitive. That Saturday game had some stretches where it was 0-0, oh, 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 0 0 through five innings, but it's like it wasn't super competitive. It's not even like Arkansas did anything crazy. Um, so yeah, I'll be, I'll be interested to see just how bad Missouri is. I mentioned that Georgia just got swept by Kentucky, so hey, maybe Kentucky's got it going a little bit. They beat Murray State, who we know is a pretty good baseball team. Uh, so hey, maybe we'll see it. We'll see if Kentucky's about that life or not. Arkansas has to go to Lexington, so a nice little peek at see what they got going on. And then Georgia is hosting Alabama, who's coming off a nice series win against Tennessee. Um, so there's some there's some exciting action around the SEC to watch this weekend. Uh, obviously, Arkansas's the big one, and I should also mention that Arkansas's game Thursday is on national TV, which in this day and age in 2024, the young folks like myself, we know that like. You just use the ESPN app, and it's all the same. It doesn't really matter if it's on SEC Plus or SEC Network or ESPN2. It's all the same to us. But I know we got some old folks who like to tune into the podcast and uh, who just watch the games on TV, which I guess this will be the first time they get to watch Arkansas play this year. Uh, so good for them. But it's always it's always fun whenever like Arkansas is on TV for the first time. And I feel like this year it lined up perfectly where basketball season ends last week. You, you, know, you have the sweep against Missouri, but obviously that's not going to bring in a ton of eyeballs. Uh, but now Arkansas is going on the road to Auburn. They're on the they're on the big network. Uh, kind of all they're they're one of two SEC games I believe we were talking about Mississippi State and A and M also play Thursday through Saturday. But Arkansas is kind of you know on a nice little big stage there, and so I'll be interested to see if we get some overreactions if Arkansas looks bad in that first nationally televised game. But this will be a fun weekend just to kind of assess. I mean, look, we know Arkansas is very good. They've won 13 straight. They're number one in the country. This team has all the pieces. We've we, we've discussed it on this podcast. I'm not. I'm preaching to the choir here a little bit. Um, but again, like I said, I, if people are expecting this to just be a cakewalk series on paper, you know, I see why because Auburn there's not there's nothing really on paper that would indicate that Auburn is about to take this series from Arkansas, no matter where they play it. But like I said, man, it's just tough to go into an SEC team's park and expect to just dominate them. And uh, Arkansas very well could do that. I mean, this team is very talented. There is not a game that Arkansas will play this year that I will expect them to lose, and that includes this weekend. But I'm just thinking big picture. I think back to some of these Auburn series. Like I think back to 2019 when Arkansas had, I believe it was like a 15, 16 inning game against Auburn, which was also in the second the second part of a doubleheader, and Arkansas had lost the game before. Uh, Arkansas ends up winning that the second part of the doubleheader and then winning the next day. But it's like. These games seem to come down to the wire all the time. I mean, just historically, if you look back at all of Arkansas's road series, regardless of the level of competition, it's really hard to sweep a team on the road. The last time I can think of off the top of my head Arkansas doing it was 2021 against Mississippi State, who ended up winning the freaking national title. Um, and that was just kind of a, a little bit of an – it was clearly an anomaly a little bit. Um, so it, sometimes it just takes weird stuff like that to have a sweep on the road. I mean, even the last couple of years, Arkansas has gone to Missouri – and not swept them. So it's like, just tells you right there, like even if you are substantially better than a team, which I do feel like Arkansas is substantially better than Auburn, it's just really tough to go in there and win all three games. And even if you are going to win all three games, you're going to have to fight and scratch and claw for a little bit of that, um, which we really didn't see Arkansas have to do. We didn't see them have to dig deep against Missouri. We didn't have to see Arkansas like have a huge stressful situation of like, oh, who are we bringing in out of the bullpen? How is Gabe Gacko going to handle this environment? Like, I, We didn't have to answer any of those questions because it was a pretty stress-free sweep over Missouri at home and in front of your home fans and on St. Paddy's Day weekend, so everyone was drunk, and it didn't really matter. Uh, this weekend is going to have a little bit more intensity, a little bit more stakes, I would say. And I mean, you know, starting off 3-0 is great. If Arkansas were to go in there and just make quick work of Auburn and come out of this sucker 6-0, it would really start to get the antenna of, I mean, everyone knows Arkansas is good. They're ranked number one. But if you go in there and sweep Auburn, then people start really looking and like, hey, this might be a situation, you know? Like I remember when t in Tennessee in 2022 when they went 25-5 and five in SEC play, it took us about two weeks before we started noticing, hey, this this team, I think they started like 9-0 and or 10-0 and or something like that in SEC play, where you start noticing like, oh, this team might be, there's a, there's a little bit of a gap between these guys and everyone else. Uh, I'm not saying that's what's happening with Arkansas, but I'm saying, going out and sweeping Auburn 
would honestly be an indication of something like that. But uh, so I've got Parker's brilliant, well written. He dipped the quill in ink and he he went to work on this one. This is beautiful. I've got a story pulled up here, so we're just gonna go through it a little bit. Uh, some of the projected pitching matchups. We got some some breaking news on that front today. Uh, listening to Butch Thompson's press conference, uh, Auburn is shaking up their rotation a little bit. So it's a Thursday through Saturday series. They had been going with Chase Alsup, who is I believe he's either a junior or senior right hander. Been around for a while. Pitched against Arkansas before. Uh, he's been their Friday night starter. Uh, they had a young man by the name of Carson Myers who had been their Saturday guy, left-hander, who's got pretty good stuff and until the last couple of weeks was like pretty much the best pitcher on their staff. But he got roughed up against Vanderbilt, had been roughed up the week before, so they take him out. Uh, they moved their midweek starter, Connor McBride, up to the Thursday spot. So he's pitching game one in this series against Hagen Smith, which I'm going to just keep it real with you. Missouri, I know for a fact, threw off against Hagen Smith. They did not throw their best arm against him because it's like, it's almost like teams are punting that game sometimes. And when you see Hagen Smith throw and just how highly regarded he is around the country, it makes a little bit of sense. I'm not saying Auburn is punting on this one, but I think there's a particular reason their ace is not pitching on the first game of the series. You can make the argument it's just because of the, the Thursday through Saturday, but also it's really not that big of a deal moving your starters up one day. Like anyone who's pitched before played baseball would tell you pitching on five days of rest versus six days of rest it's pretty much the same thing you know you throw your bullpen on the same day it is what it is really no difference dvh actually downplayed it the other day said that all three of arkansas starters are going to be on same workload they would normally be on because arkansas plays thursday through saturday next weekend so it's like really not even a thing uh i think this was a very obvious like chess move by auburn to see if they could maybe punt that game one and see if they can take games two and three who knows uh, but yeah, they're gonna have their you know guy who's been their midweek starter is gonna be pitching on Thursday. His name's Connor McBride, and numbers are great: two four one ERA, three and zero. You know, only four walks in eighteen and two thirds innings. Opponents aren't hitting great against him. JUCO transfer, junior right hander, but this is his first weekend start, and it's his first SEC appearance at all. I didn't even pitch last weekend for him, so this is kind of a huge moment for him to kind of see what he's like for Auburn, and you know he'll be at home, so that's a little bit nice, but. What a way to make your SEC debut against the number one team in the country who, uh, you know, I mean, Arkansas offensively, it's not like Arkansas is this juggernaut that's been hitting 400 or anything, but just quite the moment to give the ball to a guy making his uh, his first appearance in the league. Um, and then, I, like I mentioned, Chase Alsop is kind of their guy who uh, really got roughed up last week against Vanderbilt. His ERA jumped all the way up to 715, but he's got 27 strikeouts and 22 innings. Uh, some of the more the better stuff on their team, and he's been around for a while. I remember him being one of their main bullpen arms the last couple years. Auburn's game three starter, Joseph Gonzalez. If I say that name and it rings a bell, it's because you've probably watched him pitch nine times. He's been at Auburn uh, since I was in grade school. He was at one point viewed as, I think he was a freshman All-American as a freshman, or like maybe freshman All-SEC type of thing, but he was in the weekend rotation for Auburn as a freshman. And I remember him being like a somewhat of a big deal. Like he was one of their better starters that year. And, you know, I know people liked him and thought he was kind of projectable. He just has never really turned the corner. He just keeps coming back and not taking that next step. I couldn't believe this. Only four strikeouts in 13 innings so far for Joseph Gonzalez. He's had a couple really short starts, ERA 692. So we'll see how long the leash is for him. Uh, but this is also a guy that has pitched at a high level before, had good, good outings in the SEC. And so it's like, just one of those things where on paper you look at it and you're like, hey, this guy stinks. But I don't think anyone should be stunned if he you know, gets it going this weekend. But Arkansas had success against him in the past. You know, not a ton of overwhelming, not a ton of swing and miss stuff. So we'll see. Uh, it, it seems like it's not like Arkansas or Auburn feels really good about their starters at this point in time. I mean, even all stuff got roughed up last weekend and his numbers on the year are pretty bad. So it's like. You know, there's some talented pieces on this Ar this Auburn pitching staff. I keep saying Arkansas instead of Auburn, which is just not a good thing to do considering they are different. Um, but it's like Auburn doesn't feel great about their pitching staff right now. They just they just don't. I mean, after the weekend, they got outscored by 21 runs. Uh, I can't remember exactly how many runs they gave up. Parker, do you know off the top of your head how many runs they gave up last weekend? It was like 30 something. Yeah, they got outscored by 21, so I mean, <laughs> even if you just give up 21, that's a lot. They got outscored by 21, so that should tell you it didn't go well. I believe they got run-rolled in at least one of those games. So uh, Auburn's just looking for anyone who can take the ball right now and get outs for them. 
Um, and their bullpen, you know, I mentioned Carson Myers, who was one of their better lefties. He, he, he started all, all five weekends for them. He had been their Saturday starter, so they're moving him. So I'd assume they're going to try to use him in some type of long relief type of role. Maybe he's their backup plan if Gonzalez continues to suck. Um, Auburn's got some some veterans in the bullpen a little bit. Uh, the best one is John Armstrong, who is a very, very unique delivery. He's pitched against Arkansas before, I believe. Uh, I think I want to say he pitched against them last year. He's got a one four six ERA, twelve innings this year. He's kind of their go to reliever, but they've got some some guys. Parker Carlson and Tanner Bauman are also veterans, uh, but that's really about it. Like they don't have a ton of options there, and so you know, like Parker said in his story, the key is just see if Arkansas can get to some of those starters early, force them to go to that bullpen. There's not a ton of depth in the Auburn lineup or the pitching staff, honestly. So it's like if this series just gets down, gets out of hand, and it comes down to just depth, Arkansas is gonna going to just outpace these dudes like they just have more options on the mound they have more options at the plate like Arkansas is a much better team than Auburn like there's just there's no way around that but you know if Auburn's able to go according to plan and get good starts from their guys get to some of these veteran bullpen arms with a lead you start to feel a little bit differently I mean it's just it's just funny how this game works where you can look at a team on paper and you're like not super impressed by them but if you fall behind early and you they're able to stay on schedule, like I remember James Madison had that dude with a weird last name, like Vastgau or something like that. They had that one really good arm. They were able to get him a lead late in the ball game, and all of a sudden, James Madison's a pretty good team. You're like, oh man, we're about to drop a game here. It was kind of stunning. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that just happens when you play three series in an SEC game against legit competition, which Auburn is. Uh, and I should also mention, like I'm talking about Auburn, like they're the damn bad news bears. They're ranked 23rd in the country. They've been ranked for most of the year, like until last week. I think they were twelve and three. Uh, you know, they they've they've been viewed pretty highly as you know, kind of a consensus top twenty team. Now they're twenty three in the D one baseball poll. If they get swept by Arkansas, probably going to drop right out of it. But this is not some poverty program. And this is a team that's been winning a ton of games. Uh, Butch Thompson, I really respect that dude as a coach. Uh, is Tim Hudson still their pitching coach? Tim Hudson used to be their pitching coach, the former Braves pitcher who was awesome. Uh, I thought that was really cool. But yeah, they've just they've won a ton of games. And like I said, they're constant overachievers. I mean, they went to Omaha in 2022, went to Omaha in 2019. Seems like they're just always right. They're always pretty good. They might not ever be great, but they're always pretty good. Um, so I'm just I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing how that works out. But just looking at their lineup a little bit. So Auburn statistically is just not great as a lineup. But if you look at their you know, two through five hitters, you're like, oh, wow, there's some some big boys out there. I mean, Cooper McMurray has eight home runs, hitting 369. they They've got some other guys. Ike Irish is a big name. I believe he was a freshman last year, like freshman All-American. Uh, Cooper Weiss, who that name sounds familiar, almost kind of flirted with Arkansas in the transfer portal, and then they uh, landed this cat named Vahiva Loy and decided to tell Cooper Weiss to hit the hit the bricks. <laughs> but, you know, he's he's their shortstop. He's, trans- he's a transfer from Miami of Ohio, was a really good player there. And so, I mean, it's a, a nice impact transfer for them. Mason Manners is having a good year, too. All those guys are hitting over 300. Um, it kind of falls off a cliff after that. Like, they have pretty much everyone there. Their bottom guys are hitting, like, 220, 240, 210. It's just not a ton of stuff there. But the one thing that Auburn does is they hit for some power. And now their park is a very weird park. It's got the – they've got the green monster in left field. I believe it's 310 uh, length there and then just a humongous tall wall. So, like, it's going to probably chop down a few home runs, but also there's going to be some fly balls that are, like, 319 feet that just kind of float out, and you're like, oh, how how is that a home run? Uh, Their park is just a little – it's got weird dimensions. In left center, like, after the wall, there's, like, a huge – it goes straight back. So, like, balls get stuck in there. You have some triples every now and then. They just come out of there. So, it's a very weird park, but – Auburn is sixth in the league in home runs, sixth in the league in slugging, and even some of those dudes at the bottom of the lineup uh, that are hitting 220, 240, you know, have three or four home runs at least. So there's some pop kind of throughout the lineup, but for the most part, not a ton of like heavy threats that you got to worry about. Um, so that's kind of a little bit of like what to expect from what Auburn's got going on. Uh, I've I've got a few questions for, but I guess my three big questions for the weekend from the Arkansas standpoint of what we're expecting to see. So obviously you've got your lineup that still is not really super solved. I mean, Ross Lovich has made a pretty loud statement these last few weeks. We feel like he's in the lineup every day, whether it's left field or center field, you know, he's probably going to be in there. I feel like he's earned that right. Uh, Ty Wilmsmeyer had a decent start on Sunday. I believe he had a hit. 
uh, but has not really hit consistently enough. Like, is he going to be in center field? Is he going to sit the bench? Is Jason Jones going to get in there? Still a little bit of shuffling going on with that outfield. Uh, last weekend, Jared Spraglock got two starts at third base. Peyton Holt got one. I'll be interested to see what that situation continues to look like and if how Nolan Souza plays into it. He's been DHing. I believe he started a DH in all three games. Does he maybe get a start at third? Like, does Peyton Holt maybe take over there? Does Jared, Jared Spraglock had two hits? Like, you know, you could kind of talk me into whatever. If 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 I just read you the options and one of those stuck out to you, roll with it and talk me into it. You probably could. Uh, and again, like this is a good problem to have for Arkansas because they have a ton of guys who could play for them. Um, so I'm just interested to see how it works out. Nolan Souza, like I said, started three games at DH, had the huge game one, and then didn't do a ton after that. Uh, how does he handle you know adjusting to SEC pitching another weekend of that? Uh, the picture is getting a little bit more clear. Early in the year, we really had no idea. It was like a completely different lineup every day. At this point, we've settled into a somewhat consistent like format of it. It's just a matter of who's starting at third, who's starting at DH, who's starting at left field. Um, so those questions are still kind of up for grabs there. Uh, by the way, last week's program, I forgot to pat myself on the back on the program the other day. I don't know why. I just had a feeling. I was like, hey, I think Parker Rowland might get a start at catcher this weekend. I said that on last week's pod. Parker Rowland got a start at catcher. How about that? Um, but I would love to see Ryder Helfrich get back in there, whether it's at catcher, whether it's a pinch hit DH opportunity. I'm not going to say any names, but Arkansas has had some questionable <laughs> DH pinch hit situations going on here the last few weeks. Um, I would love to see Ryder Helfrich get back in there because, I mean, the dude's a stud, man. I know he's not off to a great start to his college career at the plate, and uh, I'm sure it's been a little bit of an adjustment period, and DVH kind of joked about it at a Swatters Club that, you know, you, you start your career. You The first swing he ever had as a hog was a home run. He's obviously a huge recruit, had success everywhere he's gone. I think him struggling a little bit has probably surprised him as much as anyone else, and so it's, you know, there's a little bit of a mental hurdle to get through, and so maybe sitting for a couple weeks and just watching, maybe that's what he needed, but I would love to see Ryder Helfrich get back in there. So I predicted that Parker Rowland would start a catcher last week. I don't even know why I did that. It worked out. I think I'm going to predict. I think Ryder Helfer gets a start at catcher this week, and I am looking forward to seeing how he handles it. But also Hudson White. Uh, it feels like we're almost there with him and Vahiva both, where it's like they started off so bad, and it was like, oh, man, like what's going on with these guys? But we knew that they had hit in the offseason. Vahiva, you're starting to see the makings of it. He's starting to hit for some power. You're seeing at least why guys like me were drooling all over him preseason. Hudson White, it feels like anytime he gets a hit, I'm like, all right, he's back. And then he'll like take one step back. He'll have a strikeout with the bases loaded or something. Uh, he had a really nice double in the opposite field gap the other day, which that kind of swing tells me like, all right, he's almost back on track. If he's hitting the ball for power the other way, that tells me he's not pressing as much at the plate. It seems like we're almost there. I wouldn't be surprised if that dude has a massive weekend. I feel like he's due for a little bit. I mean, this is a dude that hit 296 at Texas Tech uh, with 10 home runs, and he really doesn't strike out a ton. I mean, even this year, all of his strikeouts have come in big moments, but he's not a huge strikeout guy. I feel like he's due to start racking up some hits, so I'd like to see really both of those catchers get it going a little bit this weekend. But moving on, I said I had three questions, and then I just completely ignored them for a while. But the first question I have, Gorilla Ball. we got to talk Gorilla Ball again, boys. And I don't mean the Gorilla Ball as in, like, the actual toy figurine and all that. I mean Arkansas showed off some pop at the plate last weekend, which we had been kind of waiting for. And again, like I said, it was kind of funny that they decided to do the Gorilla Ball bit because they hadn't been hitting home runs a ton coming into last weekend's series. But they showed off that pop, showed off that it's still in there, all that upside offensively that we hope for. Uh, and like I mentioned, they hit 237 as a team against Missouri over the weekend, which would be concerning if they didn't slug over 550 and hit a ton of home runs. I believe Arkansas is like top five in runs, home runs, and slugging uh, through one week of SEC play. Can Arkansas keep that going? I mentioned Auburn's Park is a little bit offensive at times. Uh, there's some home runs, especially to left field. I would love to see Arkansas take advantage of that. Um, I'm not saying Arkansas needs to be living and dying by the home run or home run or bust. It's not the only question I have, but I kind of want to see if Arkansas still has that thump offensively, see if they're able to take it into a real SEC series. Because last week you played an SEC team, but it was Missouri. And as we have, we have confirmed on this program, not a real SEC team, despite what Jason Jones tried to tell me. Um, I, I would I would love to see Arkansas kind of keep keep that up. And uh, second question I have is just how will Arkansas respond to adversity? And you know, 
when I say that, you're like, hey, well, what if they don't face adversity? Sure, I guess they, they could just sweep Auburn and have no issues. I mean, they didn't face any adversity last weekend, seemed to do all right. If they don't, then I guess we'll just have to reevaluate then. But going on the road against Auburn, there's going to be something that goes wrong, whether it's Brady Tiger, you know, only making it two and a third, whether it's Hagen Smith giving up a three run home run, whether it's, you know, the bats going quiet, whether it's something weird happening, a bunch of errors. Uh, there's always weird things that happen, especially I feel like that first road series. I mean, we our Arkansas went on the road to Arlington and couldn't hit at all. So it's like we've seen them face a little bit of adversity on the road. Uh, and we saw some good moments there in Arlington, like Jake Faraday coming in with a big save. Hagen Smith's obviously great outing. The starting pitching kind of rose to the occasion. Uh, but I'm ready to see, can these bats rise to the occasion away from Baum Walker Stadium? I, I mean, I'm saying we haven't seen it yet, mostly just because we haven't seen them play on the road a ton. But, you know, didn't hit a ton in Arlington, and I know that's a bigger park, different situation earlier in the year, three different teams, completely different situation. But I do just want to see how Arkansas responds to adversity. And uh, I was thinking back in 2022, Arkansas had a really big series at Auburn. And this was late in the year when Arkansas was still trying to make their push to win the SEC regular season title, which they ended up choking away because they lost to Vanderbilt the next weekend. But at that point in time, it was a huge series, and this was two teams that finished their year in, year in Omaha. Auburn, Arkansas actually eliminated Auburn in Omaha that year. But I remember that 2022 game one, Connor Nolan gave up five runs, but like three of them were unearned. It was like a weird situation. Jalen Battles made an, a very rare error. Uh, Arkansas botched a double play. There was a couple other weird things that happened. Arkansas ends up down five to nothing in the first four innings of that game, and they end up winning eleven to eight. They kind of clawed their way back. Jay Sporfin hit a big home run. Kendall Diggs hit a huge three run home run. Robert Moore hit a home run to give it up, give, give them the lead. Uh, I just remember like moments like that where Arkansas's resolve was tested a little bit, and you saw them bounce back. Those are the kind of moments that happen when you go away, when you get out of your comfort zone, when you leave your own ballpark, and you're forced to. You know, being a being a game that was a little bit tougher than you expect. Uh, that's whenever you kind of get that team's DNA, the personality starts to come out. And you know, we've seen Arkansas kind of answer the bell anytime they faced adversity this year. But it's a little bit different when it's like McNeese at home, or Murray State at home, or even James Madison at home. I want to see this team go out on the road, play a legitimate SEC team. Which you know, I make fun of Missouri a lot. Auburn is a legitimate SEC team. They're a worse team than Arkansas, but they're a legitimate SEC team. Uh, so I'm just looking forward to seeing how that, how the vibes are there. And, you know, this team had a lot of fun last weekend. The gorilla ball, with the you know, dancing around, the giving each other the figurines and putting the mask on and all that. Uh, do they have that same swagger? Do they have that same personality? And that, are they able to have that much fun on the road in a real test? I'm looking forward to seeing that. And another thing is, I guess my third question is, when those tight moments happen late, how will we feel about this Arkansas bullpen? On paper, you look at it and you're like, all right, Will McIntyre's been really good. Cody Frank's been really good. Gabe Gackle's been lights out as the closer. Even Gage Wood had his moments. You know, Cooper Dossett now having his thing. So you're starting to look at the pieces and you're like, all right, it makes sense. Arkansas has a good bullpen. I would say if you're looking for question marks on this team from a big picture national perspective, people know about Hagen Smith. They know about Brady Tiger. know about Mason Molina. They know about Kendall Diggs, Peyton Stovall, all these pieces in the lineup. I think the big picture, the question is Arkansas's bullpen. Is that really going to be a national title winning bullpen? I think Arkansas has the pieces to do it. I mean, this pitching staff top to bottom, talent-wise, is on a different level. I mean, talent-wise, there's no doubt about it. But I've always I've always tell people this, like whenever you bet on a team to win or lose, you know how you feel about that team once the game starts. You either are betting on them and you feel good about it, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I feel confident with so and so. Or you start to feel a little bit nervous. And like I just think of like those quarterbacks, like a Kirk Cousins or Matt Ryan or whoever it is, when the big moments come, like guys that are great have all these awesome careers, all these numbers. But when the moment comes, you don't really trust them in any situation. Uh, what are we going to feel as observers, as fans, as people who follow this program when Gabe Gackle takes the mound in a nine to eight game on Saturday? Like, how will you feel? I don't know. I think I'll feel pretty good because Gabe Yackel's come through in these situations, but what will it look like? We have not really seen him pitch against an SEC team. We've obviously seen him pitch against high-level competition. I've seen him pitch against his Arkansas lineup. It's not a question of talent or can he get it done, but I'm looking forward to seeing him out there in those tests and seeing how he responds. And, you know, some of those other names I mentioned, like Will McIntyre's kind of his career breakout happened at Auburn a couple of years ago. That was his first SEC appearance. So, I, you know, I trust a guy like that. I trust Cody Frank, who's been in these situations, but 
How will we fear, feel about Cooper Dossett if he gets thrown a big inning in like the seventh or eighth inning and he comes in for an inning? How will he look? How will we feel about him? Uh, these are just some of the things I'm wondering about, and I think like we talk about it every week of like what this bullpen hierarchy is going to look like because we know the pieces at the top. We know Gackle's closing, McIntyre and Frank, but I feel like there's just outs to get in between that. And honestly, we we haven't seen it play out, but like what happens if one of these starters just has a three inning start? What happens if Tiger has to leave the game early? Like, what happens if something weird like that happens? I want to see how Arkansas responds to that. So this bullpen, I have faith in it. I like the pieces, but I'm 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 very interested to see how Arkansas responds to being in this setting on the road and just what it looks like. Because I, I feel like Auburn's going to punch him in the mouth at some point. It's also worth noting this is an Auburn team that just got embarrassed uh, against Vanderbilt, got absolutely walloped. Uh, they they responded well, got a nice midweek win against South Alabama on the road. Uh, and like I said, they, they they just aren't a team that stays down for long as a program. I don't think Auburn's one of the worst teams in the SEC, so it's like hard for me in my brain to imagine them being 0-6 in SEC play. If they're not going to be, it's going to have to come at the expense of Arkansas. And, uh, you know, I was listening to Butch Thompson's press conference earlier today, and he referenced – that last year they had a really embarrassing series similar to that, and they responded by beating LSU two out of three at home. Uh, and LSU ended up winning the national title. Obviously, Auburn was not as good as LSU last year. Auburn's not as good as Arkansas this year. Weird shit happens, man. It happens a lot. Uh, you lose to teams you're not supposed to. I'm not saying it's like guaranteed to happen this weekend, but I just have a feeling that Arkansas is going to be tested in a way that we have not seen them tested yet, and I look forward to seeing how they respond so let me guys let me know what you guys think in the comments. You know your questions, your concerns. Uh, what, who are you kind of who you got your eye on this weekend? Uh, let me know, man. I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, like I said, today's Wednesday, so this will be our this and Arkansas plan Thursday through Saturday. So this will be our last episode of the week. But who knows? Maybe I'll get bored and crank out a little episode after the series. We'll see. But if not, we will be back Monday to recap the series. Maybe Sunday night. Who knows? Probably Monday to recap the series. Uh, we'll try to get some cool guests on. I know you guys like that. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it's going on, but who knows? Arkansas has got to take care of business first. We've got, got, got to take care of business at the plate first. Uh, go out on the road, go out on the planes and get a dub or two or three. Um, we'll see how it goes, but it's been another tremendous episode of the bombastic podcast. Probably our shortest one yet. We're not even at 40 minutes. Uh, you know, just is, it is what it is. Sometimes they, they got us on a short week. We weren't prepared, but it is what it is. I uh, hope you guys have fun watching this series, and I'm looking forward to seeing the gorilla, the gorilla masks out and about. I, I can't stop thinking about that damn gorilla, man. That's like the coolest thing. <laughs> That's all I can think about is the, the gorilla ball, man. I can't wait to see who hits that first home run and gets the mask put on them. Uh, and as, as I said, we will be keeping you covered with all gorilla ball content. We'll be keeping track of who gets the gorilla each game. I look forward to seeing those videos put out by the baseball account. Um, so like I said, hey, you got your questions, comments, concerns, Drop them below. We will get to them on the next podcast. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Have a great one.